If you don't know about these 10 React Native components, you actually make your life harder than it has to be. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev and in today's video I'm going to show you 10 React Native components that you can almost instantly drop into your React Native application and they're both very performant and offer a lot of functionality out of the box. I also put a link below the video to the code on GitHub for all the 10 examples so you can quickly test them out and now without further ado, let's dive straight into it. Let's begin with a small package and the first one on our list of components is the React Native Bouncy checkbox, a package with 500 stars and and it does exactly what you might think, it is creating awesome checkboxes. The integration is super easy, so here in my dummy application I just edit the code and it just works. You can style this to exactly your needs. It is a bit more tricky once you use real state actually and not let the component manage the state, but that's a different problem. To get started, Bouncy Checkbox is an epic replacement for the default checkboxes. The second component is something I already used in a previous video. It is the React Native Bottom Sheet by Gorham. It is probably the best bottom sheet component for React Native and we can easily include this once again in our application by using um, different ways. We can use the standard way of the bottom sheet uh, or in this example I actually used um, the functionality. So you see I can actually also control this bottom sheet in the backdrop from code. We can have some custom styling. Uh, you can have it as a modal, you can have it as a shared component. It is really a very great and dynamic package and I pretty much always use it when I now need something like a bottom sheet or a modal overlay. The third package is something a podcast guest recommended to me which is the gifted chat. You can look at it 12,000 stars here on GitHub and this is a great package if you want to implement any kind of chat. And trust me, it is unbelievable easy. Check out this example. Here I'm having my gifted chat in my code and that's pretty much all I sent to it. Only the array of messages, a little function for sending messages, following the documentation and as a result I get this epic view in which I can directly send messages and exactly have the styling that you would expect from a chat. We have the scrolling in here. So all of this comes right out of the box just with like five lines of code. So if you want to implement any kind of chat functionality in your application, give Gifted Chat a try and I'm pretty sure you won't regret it. Component number four is for all of you who want to present char data in your application. May it be the Web3 stocks NFT price that you're tracking or anything else. This library has really great performance as it's using Skia and D3 and reanimated for your charts. The implementation is somewhat easy uh, and you're gonna easily get a linear bar chart like this. Is this a bar chart? I think so. Um, by using the Victory native package and a bit of code to display the data on your different axes. You can pretty much uh, specify all the options, how you want to style it, how it should look like. You can have tooltips. Um, you can see even more examples on their documentation page like these. So if you want any kind of interactive charts in your application, this package is probably the most performant for your case. Component 5 is a very small package, but a very helpful package, and that is a toast message for our application. Um, I really like to display some snack or toast messages every now and then, and with this package it becomes really easy. So let's check it out. In the toast implementation, all we need to do is call the toast package and then it would display a beautiful toast message just like this. We just had to wrap a context or add a component to our layout file here with the routing and then we can use it from everywhere in our application. We can also specify different options of course for colors, text or even create our own toast message and I think having a package for toast messages can come in really handy from time to time. Speaking of handy packages, the React Content Loader definitely falls into that category as well. Once again, 13,000 stars and it can actually be used for React on the web as well as React Native. This one's used for skeleton views and the cool thing is it actually comes with a ton of examples like a Facebook style skeleton loader here. Um, or we got Instagram style, we got code style. So you can use these predefined skeleton views or of course create your own. Let's check it out. Uh, here's a skeleton placeholder view where I just used the uh, Facebook loader up here. So that would be a Facebook uh, skeleton. This down here would be an Instagram skeleton. 
And these skeleton views just help you to uh, improve the perceived performance in your application. You see it pretty much everywhere. YouTube, when you open the app, it's always showing the skeleton views and it's the same for Instagram or other applications. So use these skeleton views as they also come with animations out of the box if you want them. And as you can see, the code really, it's just a few lines of code um, to integrate these loaders or create your own custom loader if you want even uh, more custom skeleton views. Component number seven is somewhat bigger, although you can use a small implementation of it, and it's the React Native Pager View. Once again, uh, it's actually having 2K stars on GitHub, but you can create amazing slides just like this. So you cannot just have like the default boring slide left, slide left, and uh, some text and tutorial stuff. No, you can actually have really fancy stuff. And I tried to copy some code over, and I think I made the example work. So here it is. This is the page I view, and of course, there's a lot more going on. This is not just the standard page I view, but it's a combination of the page I view um, and using reanimated for some animations, as far as I can see, or just animated. Actually, it's just using the animated package. I thought this was using reanimated. Well, it doesn't matter. Thing is, you can do these kind of things with a React Native pager. So that comes from their documentation. I did not do this. I'm not sure if I could ever pull this off, but it's a great starting point if you want to implement something epic. But under the hood, this is just a pager view that you can use and it can be used really easy or it can be used for really advanced stuff like what you see in this example. Component number eight is actually two components. So we got the Expo Blur View and the Linear Gradient. And I want to highlight these because when I got started with React Native and Expo, I didn't know about these things because I never heard about them. But once I used them, I was like, wow, this is actually pretty amazing. Um, quick note, by the way, Blur View usually has some problems on Android. I just want to mention this upfront, but let's check it out what it actually is. So here we got a linear gradient in our application. So we don't have to do this uh, with some CSS. We can just use the linear gradient component. And then down here, I have my blurred example. I just put one uh, image from the previous example in the background and this blur view on top of it. You can change the intensity. So it changes from being very blurred to somewhat blurred. You can also change the background color and both of these components can come in so handy. Uh, I've used both in one of my applications and I think they can make your uh, app development life a lot easier and also they can look pretty awesome. Component number nine is a declarative cross-platform calendar component. And I think this falls into the category of really React Native essentials. Also start by almost 9K people and the usage of this calendar is just unbelievable easy. Let's check this out. Here is the code. You just leave one, two, three, four, five lines. You could actually put all of this in one line. And as a result, voila, you get a calendar like this. You even don't need that one line for the on press event. But this is a super easy component if your app requires a calendar. Of course, they're not all functionalities. Like in the past, I wanted to do an Airbnb style where you like press the first event and then the last day, and then you have like the, the range of dates uh, highlighted. There are other components. Also a date picker component can help on top of this. So you could nicely combine a date picker with this calendar component. But this calendar itself is just so unbelievable easy to use that I definitely needed to mention it in this video. And the last component is the flash list, a very popular package in the React Native community. Initially, I just used a list of components, then I used a flat list, and then at some point I used the flash list. So if you want to have great performance with a lot of views and recycling and all that fun, you're going to have to use the flash list. The usage is actually pretty easy. It's pretty much exactly the same like you would use uh, a flat list, but with a flash list, um, you just drop it in. You have an estimated item size, which helps to calculate these views. And as a result here, I have a view with 500 items, no problem problem at all. I mean, that's not very resource intensive, but anyway, those are 500 items that can scroll really, really easily and you could have a lot more. So if you have big lists, if you care about performance, then you definitely want to use flash list instead of flat list in the future. Oh. Right, and that 
that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed these 10 components. I definitely used most of them before and I was really really happy when I discovered each of them because all of them made my life a bit easier and the solutions they gave me are usually better than the custom stuff that I came up with. So go check them out, support the creators of these packages and if you have any other package that you think is noteworthy, drop it down in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button so you get notified about the upcoming videos. Hope you will have a great week with some awesome React Native code and I'll catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.